so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too.
This is a mic test from our Savior's Lutheran Church, the 17th of Sunday, 17th, Sunday the 17th today. End mic check. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this day. We're glad that you've joined us. Um, we know there are many who are watching by Facebook and on the radio. We always invite you to join us in person if you're able. We ask you to pray for all those requesting our prayers. They are listed in the bulletin. We ask you to remember, uh, to remember in your prayers Gail Jensen, um, Marv's wife, who is hospitalized at St. Mary's Hospital in Rochester, and Floyd Flory, who is hospitalized in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So please remember those two, especially in your prayers this week. The radio broadcast is given um, by Lois Baker in memory of Gordy. Uh, we thank you for that gift. Altar flowers celebrate the wedding anniversaries of Troy and Tanya, Trevor and Margaret, Kelsey and Mitch, children and spouses of Mike and Jeannie Diggins. We thank them for, the, for that gift as well. Our prayers go out to Darwin to Beast and family on the death of his wife, Jan. Jan died at Luther Haven this past Tuesday. Her funeral and celebration of life will be tomorrow here at Our Saviors at 10.30 a.m. So we ask you to pray for them and all of those who mourn her passing. Following worship today, we will welcome into the kingdom Henry William Kreckman. He is the son of James Kreckman and Christine O'Leary, so please pray for Henry as he will be baptized this day. We are in need of radio sponsors and altar flower sponsors. If you can help with that, please call the church office. We ask our confirmants to come in after, um, to come up forward after worship. Check in, um, check a mark by your name. It's on the front pew. 
Note all the calendar items. We have added the calendar back into the bulletin again. It's on the insert in the bulletin. Please note all those things and respond as you always do. We have some great upcoming events for families and great worship opportunities, so join us. Finally, I just want to say thank you to all of our Bible buddies. Uh, today, our third graders will receive their Bibles. What a great and wonderful gift you have given them. And then First Communion training, if you're here for that, it will actually begin downstairs in Bethany Hall. Thanks for all you do. Quentin has a couple of announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a reminder that this weekend, uh, next Saturday at 7 o'clock, we are going to have family bingo night on Zoom. So looking forward to that. And at this time, I'm going to welcome all of our summer uh, canoe adventures up to the front. Um, this spring, we raised over $8,000 for brand new equipment, and we took two great trips. So we're going to ask some of these people to share uh, what these trips meant with them, what they learned, and how that, and how that affected their faith. Uh, so we'll start with the Crow Wing River trip. Uh, Karina and Annalise Jan and their mom Beth went, and they are at home today uh, because they have the cold that is going around. So please wash your hands and wear your mask. Um, <laughs> it's going around and it's, it's crazy. There's something going around. Um, and so they sent me this via email, so thank you for joining us, ladies, on Facebook. And uh, Karina had this to say about the Crow Wing River. She said, I really enjoyed the river. I loved waking up every morning and having breakfast and getting on the river. River snacks and lunch were always fun. At the end of the day, we set up camp, ate dinner and s'mores and had Bible study. I loved the campfire songs and sleeping in a hammock every night. I learned a lot about God and nature on that trip. Annalise had this to say, I really enjoyed the Crow Wing River trip this summer. It was my first camping trip I've ever been on. The river was really low, so we kept getting the canoe stuck on rocks. But it added to the adventure. I really liked the tortilla s'mores, and my favorite part was when we all sang songs together. And Beth, their mom, had this to say. She was a trooper. I went on a similar trip when I was about 14 years old through a Lutheran camp in Iowa. It was impactful, and I was excited for Annalise and Karina to have a similar experience. I ended up going along as a chaperone, and I was slightly worried as I doubted my abilities since it had been at least 25 years since I had done any sort of camping or canoeing. I didn't need to worry. Quinton had everything well planned. River culture is very go with the flow, and what I needed to know came back to me or I learned as we went. It was nice to disconnect from tight schedules and just enjoy nature and time together. There are so many great memories, making meals together, setting up and taking down camp, seeing many different animals, including bear prints in the parking lot, singing, praying, campfires, and s'mores. The list goes on and on. It was beautiful and a growing experience for us all. The girls told me they would go again. So that tells you it was a great experience. So that was our Crow Wing River trip that we partnered with Cross of Calvary and Olivia. And at this time, the guys behind me went to, on the Boundary Waters trip this summer, where we avoided all the wildfires and couldn't have any campfires. So here's what they have to say. I really enjoyed the Boundary Waters trip because it was nice to get off my phone for a week and spend time with members of my congregation. I really enjoyed the trip because I really enjoy playing cards and my favorite part was when my fish fed, gave everybody an extra lunch. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the Boundary Waters just because you were able to be there with friends and do stuff with God and fish and just be with friends. Good morning, everybody. Uh, about a week or two before the Boundary Waters trip, I had heard a focus on the family uh, thing on the radio talking about how you know, fathers and sons should really get out and do stuff together, talking, and they specifically mentioned canoe trips. Um, and this summer, kind of leading into this, my boys and I had been kind of butting heads all summer long. I was a little bit nervous about how it was going to go, but it really, really was a good trip, um, as advertised from a, from a folks on the family standpoint. And I'd never been to the Boundary Waters before, even though, you know, that growing up here, you hear about it your whole life. And it was, it was really nice. So thank you all for, you know, the donating to the fundraising and to the congregation. Thank you so much for sharing, guys. Um, 
what we started this summer is something that we hope to continue and make a tradition that um, people look forward to. So again, thank you so much for your support and we look forward to in many, many years of wonderful outdoor camping ministry together in the summer. So our service continues with worship. Please stand for the brief word of confession and forgiveness. We worship this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, yes. so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given to die for each one of us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn is Son of God, Eternal Savior. This is hymn number 655, 655. You're listening to our Savior's Lutheran Church, our Sunday morning service, broadcast over KDMA and Facebook. We're blessed to have you with you. Enjoy the service. Again, this song, Son of God, Eternal Savior, hymn 655.
continue with their greeting in the Kyrie. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understand as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Greetings from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. This morning we will also be having the presentation of the third grade Bibles at the church. Here now is our first reading. Today's reading tells of the suffering of the prophet Jeremiah, who announced God's word to Judah, but was met with intense opposition and persecution. Jeremiah continues to trust in God in the midst of his suffering. The first reading is Jeremiah 11, verses 18 through 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they would devise schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. 
For to you I have committed my cause. The second reading is from James 3, verses 13 through chapter 4, verse 3, and 7 through 8. The introduction. The wisdom God gives unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, we manifest this wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality toward others. The lesson. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it so you commit murder. You covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Here ends the readings. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Please join me. Alleluia. God has called us through the proclamation of the good news that we may obtain glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for this, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, comes from the Gospel Mark, the ninth chapter. Here's the introduction. Jesus' teaching and action in this text are directed to the church whenever it's seduced by the world's definition of greatness, prestige, power, influence, and money. The antidote to such a concern for greatness is servanthood. Here's the text. Jesus and the disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man must be, is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And after three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, and he called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a child and put it among them. And taking his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes me. Not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Please be seated. We'll have our children's moment. And here again is Quentin. You guys got it. Come on down. Hey, good morning. You're listening to our Savior's Lutheran Church of Montevideo. Regular Sunday morning service. Happy to have you. Blessed to have you. And uh, uh, Quentin, pardon me, has gathered quite a crew of children up, or kids, I call them, up to the front. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so for my something, something special today, I brought my phone. Everyone say, boo! Exactly. Our phones are supposed to be in our pocket during church. But I brought my phone because I want to talk about the word call. You know, our phones are so crazy. Do you know what I can do on my phone? I can sit here and I can play games. I can talk to someone by texting them. 
I can go on the internet and research something. But phones were designed so that we could call each other and we could talk to each other. And so today I want to talk about the word call. And it says that in our gospel that Pastor Don just read, Jesus is talking about talking and teaching to his disciples. And he says, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after he is killed, he will rise again. And so Jesus is talking about how to be a disciple and how to live out your call, right? So each and every one of us has a calling. So for me, God has called me to our saviors right here and now to hang out with you and to teach you about God. God has called each and every one of you for a purpose that someday you'll find out. But for now, your calling is to go to school and learn. For Pastor Don, he's called to be here at our Savior too. That's what his call is. Um, for your parents, their call in life is to do whatever they do. So some of your parents are farmers. Some of your parents work at other places, at offices. or um, And that is all about our calling. So each and every one of us has a different job in our lives that God has called us to do. And in, his, in the story today, God has called his disciples to follow him. And so that is our lesson for today, that we all have some kind of a calling somewhere in life. So please join me in prayer. Congregation, you can join us too. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for calling us. Thank you for calling us. To do, to do whatever it is we do. Each and every day. Each and every day. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, thanks for coming up today. I have fruit snacks today. There's some, uh, let's see, there's some Black Forest and there's some Welch's. Thank you, Quentin. And we'd like to mention again that the altar flowers are beautiful and given in celebration of the wedding anniversaries of Troy and Tanya, Trevor and Margaret, and Kelsey and Mitch given from Mike and Jean Diggins. Again, they're beautiful and always beautiful from those who give those altar flowers. And a reminder also that today's radio broadcast is given in loving memory of Gordy Baker from Lois and the family. I should mention that Lois is playing the organ today. Thank you, Lois, and blessed be Gordy's memory. Let's say a word of prayer. Loving God, we gather to hear your words that will change our lives and bring us closer to you. Fill us with those words that give eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do you know any good secrets? You know, those really juicy secrets that no one ever needs to know about? I'm sure that all of us know things about other people that would change lives are secrets. My mom never liked secrets. She felt that everything should be out on the table. My mom grew up in a family of alcoholics. My grandma was one of eight children, and they either married alcoholics or were alcoholics. My grandma married an alcoholic who died in a car wreck one night after leaving the bar with his cousin. My grandma always said that her faith helped her get through it all. But it was the secrets that bo bothered my mom the most. Like the secret about my great aunt Myrtle. She was a third grade teacher. Most people didn't know, but one day I saw after school when I was in, Myr in, in, my, in Myrtle's room, Mrs. Croxton's room, in the bottom drawer of her dress, desk she had a bottle. She was an alcoholic. Those kind of secrets are what destroy. Well, in the gospel today, Jesus had a secret, and so did the disciples. Both of those secrets would change lives in many ways. Jesus' secret was that he truly was the Son of God, and that he would be betrayed into human hands, and they would kill him, and after three days, he would rise again. But the disciples did not want to hear that. They did not understand that at all. They were expecting a strong military leader, a king who would take over and lead them. They did not expect that he was going to have to die. So what if Jesus' secret got out? What would happen? Well, first, I'm sure in Jesus' day, many people simply would have thought, oh, he's just crazy. And they would have written him off. 
Now, they had seen him do some miracles by this point in the gospel. He was, he was going around trying to teach the disciples what it meant to be a disciple, how to follow. But he was still really new on the scene. So he didn't have much people stock. He's just crazy. Second, if his secret got out too early, his life would have been in danger sooner. He still had God's work to do on this earth, and to cut that short would lessen the effect that Jesus would have in this world. Third, if the secret got out, some would have called him a blasphemer, and immediately they would have sent him to court, and an early death was surely certain. That was Jesus' secret. Now, the disciples had a different secret. They were arguing among themselves who was the greatest. When the king took over, who would sit at his right and left? Who were going to be those valuable princes in the king's court? Jesus simply asked, what were you talking about on the way? Now, he already knew what they were talking about, but he had to ask so as to invite them into this conversation which usually meant Jesus was going to try and teach them something. I think the gospel today calls us to take stock in ourselves and to remember that the greatest one in the kingdom must be servant of all. So what is that secret that keeps you from being the greatest servant of all? Is it pride or envy or jealousy or something else? So I started to think, who would be the, some of the greatest servants that have lived in my lifetime? And two names came to mind, Mother Teresa and Bishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa. Mother Teresa spent a, life, a lifetime helping the poor in India, raising money for food and shelter for those who had nothing. Bishop Desmond Tutu spent most of his life fighting apartheid, and then once it collapsed, He did the most amazing thing. He set up this reconciliation commission and taught the people of South Africa how to forgive those who had hurt them, how to forgive and move into a new era. So what will be the legacy that you leave as a servant of the kingdom? What is it that you will be remembered for as a servant in the kingdom? There's a story about one of the most popular movies in American culture, which was and is, still is, The Wizard of Oz. It came out in theaters in 1939. Now, it might surprise you to know that The Wizard of Oz, when it was in production, cost over $2 million to produce. And when it came out, it was an absolute flop. That's what the reviewers said about it. One movie reviewer said the movie had no trace of imagination, no trace of good taste, and no ingenuity. In fact, it took almost 20 years after its initial theater run for The Wizard of Oz to make money, to make hardly any money to give back to the studio that spent all that money creating it. But in the years since 1939, the movie has become incredibly popular on TV. The movie studios had made a great deal of money more on licensing it for TV than they ever made in the theaters. But one of the most popular lines from The Wizard of Oz occurs right after the main character Dorothy and her little dog Toto have been caught up in a tornado. The tornado tears their house from Kansas, from the farmland, and lands them in the magical land of Oz. As Dorothy stares in amazement as she opens the door, to this strange and beautiful new world, she says, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. That maybe could be said for us today. Wake up. You and I are in a brand new world that's changing faster than ever. If you're reading studies about how much technology has changed in the last hundred years, it's just explosive. I was reading the other day that the computer chip that are in these fancy smartwatches has more power in it than the first Apollo flight that went to the moon. 
That's how much things have changed. And the secret's out. Jesus is alive. That's exactly what Jesus was trying to say in the gospel this morning. You're not in Kansas anymore. The old rules about status and honor and greatness do not matter in our culture. They might matter in our culture, but they don't matter in God's kingdom. That's not how God is going to see you in the kingdom. The secret is out. Jesus died and is alive and has made each of us heirs to the throne, heirs to God's throne. The world is changing fast, and we don't know what to think. But the disciple's secret is also out. It is part of our human nature to want to be the greatest at something. Jesus then would ask you and I to be the greatest servant of all. And I can tell you from my experience, being a servant is lots of work and tiring. And in those moments, when you see the difference that a servant makes, it makes it all worth it. Like when we serve a funeral, after a funeral, our ladies and some men, we serve a meal, and we do the dishes and we clean up. I can't tell you how many families have said to me what a difference that moment made in their lives. That we reached out, that we tried to help them in their time of loss or grief. Or when we welcome a child through baptism, and someone will come up and say to me, you know, I've been praying for so-and-so for all of these years as they've grown in the faith. You've made a difference in their lives. Or the people on the back of the bulletin who serve in the military and the people who have asked for our prayers. Jesus was trying to say to us that to be the greatest in the kingdom means to be servant of all. So he took a child in his arms and said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. So who are those that need your service in mind? The world is changing fast. The old rules do not apply. The new kingdom rules will stretch you and I beyond <clears throat> our comfort zone hopefully to a place of peace and joy. <clears throat> the world is looking to see how successful you are. They're looking to see if you've obtained and become number one to the kingdom that does not matter. The kingdom is looking to see how successful you are and to see if you and I have served everyone that we could in this lifetime. If you look, there's someone around you who needs your service, who needs your help, who needs your ability, your gifts. Today, the kingdom calls you and I to that very thing. Because if you want to be the greatest, it means you have to be the greatest servant. And the world may never see you that way, but in God's eyes, to be the greatest servant is to be number one. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Don. For Our service continues with our pulpit hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father. And this pulpit hymn is number 781 in the Lutheran hymnal, Children of the Heavenly Father, Hymn number 781.
We continue the service now with the presentation of the third grade Bibles. I invite all the third graders and their parents to join me up front. From our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo, here is Quentin leading the presentation. I invite you to turn to the presentation of third grade Bibles pamphlet in your bulletin today. You're listening to the presentation of the third grade Bibles to the children, or the third graders, and their parents are with them in front of the church. This is a really cool milestone because um, today we're handing out the Adventure Bibles, and these are the Bibles that they will take with them to Sunday school from here on out until they get to confirmation. They're a fantastic resource, and we look forward to sharing this with them. So we continue in our uh, pamphlet. Third graders, on the day you were baptized, God made you his child and took you into his family. He knows you by name and he loves you just the way you are. God wants you to know him by name and to love him with all your heart. As you read your Bible, you will learn more and more about God and his love for you and for all things. And you will learn how to love as one of God's children. The Lord wants you to grow closer to him and to become more like him. And we want that too. And so today I have a question for you. Third graders, do you want to grow closer to Jesus and become more like him? Do you want to learn to live as a child of God? If you do, then please answer yes. Ooh, nice work. Uh, parents, when you brought these children to be baptized, you promised to bring them to the services of God's house, to teach them the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. You also promised that as they grew in faith, as they grew in years, you would place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for them instruction in Christian faith. That living in the covenant of their baptism, they might lead godly lives until the day of Jesus Christ. And so, parents, do you intend to continue to fulfill this promise now and in the critical years ahead? If you do so intend, then answer yes with the help of God. Members of our Savior's Lutheran Church, it's your turn. Will you support these children and parents? Will you pray for them, encourage them, and care for them, and provide for them, so that they may grow ever deeper into the lifestyle of a baptized child of God? If you so intend, then please answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Dear parents, as a congregation, we wish to help you fulfill these vows and promises that you have made now and today. To help, we have found you Bible Buddies, who are friends and family who love and care for you and your children. They want to make sure Bibles are given to your children so that you may share the Word of God with them. It is in your example and how you live your spiritual life that your children will imitate. You will lead them into the knowledge of who Jesus is and how he came to save the world from sin, death, and the devil. And so we'll pause here on the liturgy to hand out our Bibles. And then uh, as your, Lisa reads your name, parents, you are invited to come get your Bible and then hand them to your child and say the words, I love you and God does too. And then please stay up front. Uh, we'll finish the liturgy with the prayer when we're done with distributing. Jace Dack, son of Josh and Beth Dack. Gavin Deneen, son of Carrie Tad. Rinley Icorn, daughter of Eric and Tasha Icorn. Jasper Anger, son of Christina Anger. Jackson Knutson, son of Heather Knutson. Freya Olson, daughter of Josh Olson and Megan Olson. Greta Ramo, daughter of Brandon and Katie Ramo. Lainey Reifenberger, daughter of Corey and Kayla Reifenberger. Macy Schroeder, daughter of Rick and Tasha Schroeder and Melissa Schroeder.
Soren Shellstead, son of Carrie Shellstead. Madison Shords, daughter of Dustin and Julie Shords. Maren Stanley, daughter of Corey and Christy Stanley. And Levi Walter, son of Cindy Walter. Thank you, Lisa. We continue on the bottom of the last page. You are old enough third graders now to read the Bible, and so today we are giving you a Bible of your very own. The Bible is an important book. In fact, it's the most important book in the whole world because it tells of God's love for you and for everything God has made. We want you to read your Bible, mark your Bible. Yes, it's okay to write in your Bible. Learn from your Bible and make it live inside you. Let us all pray together. Blessed Lord, you speak to us through the Holy Scriptures. Grant us grace so that we may hear and read your word. Help us to grow in faith, love, and obedience to your holy words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming up. You may be seated. And that was a presentation of the third, to the third graders of their Bible from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. Thank you, Quentin. We now have the Apostles' Creed. And uh, note that we will be singing the Lord's Prayer today along with the accompaniment of Lois Baker on organ. For the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder that there are offering plates at the door if you'd like to leave your offering there. We do have our tithing app online. You can also just drop it by the church office. Please, as always, give as you are blessed. We'll continue with our offertory, our creating me. stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the church and the world and all those in need of God's care. O oh Lord God, in our humanness, many seek to be number one. Help us all to be number one servant of the kingdom, and for that to be all that we strive for in this lifetime. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, we pray for a world in need. We pray that all might be vaccinated and stop the scourge of COVID. We pray for all those who work in the front lines that they might find a time of rest and relaxation as they work so hard to save lives. We pray for an end to all those who are persecuted because of the color of their skin or because of their faith in other countries. We pray for all as they grow in faith. We pray for peace and joy for all of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O loving God, grant your healing touch to those who requested our prayers. 
for Floyd and Tina, for Marty in Georgia, for Jim and Don. We remember before you Lynette and Peggy and Kurt, Hall and Lila and Diane, and Barb and Kathy, and Marilyn and Gail, as well as Mark and Jim, Lisa and Charlie, Steve and Rich, Opal and Stan. We remember before you Steve and Pauline, Deb and Chad, Daryl and Molly, Chris and Mike. We remember before you Kathy and Kim, Karen, Bill, Dwayne, Fern and Bill, Lucas. We remember before you Dr. Bob and Christopher and Jim and Jody and others that we name in our hearts now. Send your presence in their lives and your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all life, we celebrate in life and in death because of your Son. We give thanks for the baptism that will happen this day of Henry William Kruckman, who is just starting out in life, and we thank you for the earthly life of our sister in Christ, Jan Tabist, who is now starting her eternal life with you. Thank you that in life and in death you are there for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for the Bibles that have been given this day. Bless all who have received them and remind them that with this Bible in their hands that they have the words of eternal life. Grant them a life of peace and joy that this world does not know. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for each of our members, for each of them bring new ideas and new faithfulness into this body. Bless us as we worship together and as we praise your name together. Lord, in your mercy. For all these things and whatever else we need, grant at this Pentecost season through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer of this day is sung. In the benediction. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. May the Holy One, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. 
We sing our sending song, On Our Way Rejoicing. And the sending song is number 537. Number 537, On Our Way Rejoicing. This is a sending song from the service of our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. Lois Baker, the organist, pleasure having you with us. May your week be blessed, and we hope to see you again next week. couple of reminders, fifth graders and parents downstairs in Bethany Hall, confirmands, please remember to come up and check in. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And just a couple other announcements before we uh, part company here. I've been uh, mentioning Lois's name on the organist and I know she doesn't like that, but uh, I mention that because this service today has been given in loving memory of Gordy Baker, her husband, and this was given from Lois and her family, and she was playing with some special vigor on the uh, on the organ here at Our Saviors, and we thank her for, for being with us to play the, the organ, uh, perform on it for our service. And we also like to point out again that the flowers on the altar today are uh, given in special um, recognition of the the wedding anniversaries of Troy and Tanya, Trevor and Margaret, and Kelsey and Mitch, all from Mike and Jean Diggins. Now, you've been listening to our service, which is broadcast or uh, over KDMA Radio at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. Our services are at 9, and they're open to the community, and anyone wishing to join us, they're at 9 o'clock, uh, recorded and played over KDMA at 9 o'clock. And also, the, the entire service is uh, taped and uh, played over channel 180 in the Montevideo system. And that's played uh, on uh, Tuesday at 10.30 in the morning, Wednesday 2.30 in the afternoon, and again Thursday at 10.30 uh, in the morning. So uh, uh, lots of ways if you're unable to uh, be here with us, uh, the, the Spirit will flow over those recordings and we hope you, you can watch or listen to them. And also live over a Facebook and thank you uh, for joining us in that manner along with that uh, we'd like to uh, thank you for being here and if you would like to be uh, part of this worship uh, uh, broadcasting uh, call the office here at uh, uh, the church 269-8824 we're always looking for those who wish to be sponsors for the radio 
and the altar flowers. There are live flowers on the altar every Sunday. And if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, call the church office again at 269-8824, and you could uh, be a sponsor of one or both of them. With that, we thank you for joining us, and have a blessed week And uh, from Kate for over KDMA and uh, from our Savior's Lutheran Church. Thank you, and have a blessed week.